If you're a regular listener of the Vincast, Australia's premier wine podcast, no doubt you would have heard me talk about Different Drop. Uh, Different Drop is an online wine retailer. Uh, They're based in Sydney, but they can ship wines anywhere in Australia, uh, usually within a few days. Uh, And they work with harder to find Australian wines. So a lot of the time they come from smaller producers who work in uh, sustainable methods a lot of the time using innovative uh, kind of practices. And uh, and they're making some of the most exciting wines you're going to find in Australia. Uh, usually these are the kind of wines you only find in restaurants and bars. Uh, you're not going to find them in the big chain retail stores. So uh, the guys at Different Drop uh, do a fantastic job scouring the Australian wine industry for these really exciting wines at the cutting edge. Uh, and it's a great way to to learn a little bit about really what the future of Australian wine is going to be like. Uh, and you can put together your own kind of mixed pack or you can choose one that's been prepared for you by the guys. Uh, or you can even buy uh, a special pack of guests of this very podcast so it's a great way for you to support uh, not only the guys at Different Drop but also um, guests who donate their time to be on this podcast but also donating um, you know a little bit to the podcast because every time you make a purchase uh, using the special code Intrepid Wino where you will actually get a 10% discount it actually uh, is a little bit of a kickback to me so it's a great way to uh, to support the podcast uh, if you enjoy it so make sure you go to differentdrop.com forward slash Intrepid Shepherd Wino, uh, and you'll find some uh, some products that are specifically from uh, different guests of the podcast. Uh, and make sure you put in that code at purchase Intrepid Wino to get your discount. So thank you very much, guys, for your support of this podcast and of the guests of this podcast as well. On episode 70 of the Vincast, I chat with Alessandro De Tori, the owner, winemaker, and namesake of Tinita De Tori, one of the Italian island of Sardinia's most exciting and unique wine producers. We talk about the amazing legacy left by his grandfather and how he hopes to continue to make wines of tradition that represent his particular part of the world. Hello, Vincasters. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Vincast. My name is James Scarsbrook, otherwise known as the Intrepid Wino, and it is good to be back. Uh, I uh, I had a fantastic time. I was in three, uh, three, in Italy for three weeks, uh, and it was fantastic to catch up with some of the producers that I have the great fortune of representing here in Australia uh, for my day job. Um, and I hope you did enjoy some of the back vintage episodes of the podcast. If you hadn't heard them when they originally aired, um, they're geez, about two years old now. Uh, it's pretty amazing that I've been doing the podcast for. Uh, for two years now, um, but but uh, yeah, it was it, it was great to be able to kind of re-release those episodes. I really appreciate, of course, the the early supporters of this podcast, uh, and of course the early guests as well. Uh, I've got lots of exciting guests coming up, no doubt, before the end of the year. Uh, lots of really exciting events happening, of course. But um, I did record an episode whilst I was away in Italy, and it was with one of the producers uh, again that I have the great fortune of representing here. Uh, Alessandro De Tori is the man behind Tenuta De Tori. Uh, I, it's a winery that I actually discovered uh, three years ago when I went to Vinitaly in 2012. Um, I was suggested to go and try the wines of De Tori because they are so uniquely Sardinian and, and uh so particular to the, uh, the that that place uh, that that Romanja area in Sardinia, and also uh, they represent um, a very traditional approach to wine making. So uh, I was very excited to to finally visit Sardinia and to finally visit uh, De Tori uh, and spend some time with Alessandro because he really is an amazing person, uh, such a, u- a unique vision. And, and so it was great to chat with him. Uh, I hope you enjoy his story. Uh, make sure to listen till the end uh, and you can hear ways that uh, you can get in touch with myself and Alessandro if you did enjoy the episode. Uh, but until then, I'll see you on the other side. Alessandro, welcome on uh, the Vincast and uh, welcome uh, to all of my listeners in Australia. Uh, and of course, thank you for welcoming me to uh, your beautiful part of Sardinia here in uh, Romagna. Thank you, James, for coming. 
I thank you for your time. I'm very, very happy. Uh, and we're lucky this uh, beautiful uh, day, this beautiful view uh, down to the to the sea. Uh, it's what a what a, a perfect place for a podcast. <laughs> so okay. tell me, um, can you remember when you were young, the mm -hmm. first time you you understood what wine was, the first connection you had with wine? Yes, uh, I'm. I start to work in the farm when I was twelve. Okay. Uh, because my father uh, asked me to work in uh, on the farm uh, for culture. Because uh, okay, the study, uh, but uh, it was very important. Uh, um, understood, very important. Uh, learn uh, family work. Yes. But uh, I worked in the farm. Uh, when I was 12, 13, 14, only for money. Sure. <laughs> Normally, because uh, I was a boy. I'm interested in, in having a little bit money to buy a uh, motor, <laughs> to buy uh, drums. Uh, but when I was 15, I remember very well, my grandfather, uh, my grandfather was a, was a man uh, then never like talk. Mm? Mm. Um, he never talked too much. I remember, for example, uh, one times I asked for him uh, why he used um, a typical process. Okay, I yes. ask. Excuse me, uh, no, no, in Italian, no? grandfather. Excuse me, no, no. What are you doing? My grandfather looked at me. And said, "If you not, if you don't understand, please go out of here." Okay. <laughs> very, uh, very strict. Uh, yes, very strict, very hard, very evil man. And then even no, excuse me, hard man. Um, and then I remember when I was fifteen, he dedicated to me a time to sit down. Or we sit down. Yes. Excuse me for my English. No, no, it's okay. okay. He Perfect. sat down, uh, opened the bottles, and uh, uh, gave me a wine. Yes. Yes. Uh, we drinking together, and he explained to me uh, the how important was the wine for our family, and uh, he said to me. Now you, I think you can drink this wine because you are starting uh, your life now. Mm. <laughs> okay, and uh, the wine was the Tori, the, the Tori Rosso, and he talked to me very personal things, very personal. Uh, Is it was it, was it the first time he talked to you like a, a yeah. man yes. and not a child? Exactly. So it's very different. Very different. Very different for me because uh, uh, I, I, I'm the first of the... Um, All of your cousins. Uh, ex exactly. Yes. Exactly. Uh, and, and then it was the responsibility for me. Uh, I remember very well, but uh, I can explain. Because it was more... No word than uh, uh, the world. Sure. Mm, okay. okay. And the situation. The How long has your family been making wine in, oh. in this part of Sardinia? Oh, it's, uh, it's a difficult question because we make wine when we have memory. And me, as, uh, me, my father, grandfather, the father of my grandfather, the grandfather of my grandfather. We have uh, this place, this land, uh, 600 years. Wow. Uh, and so, very great responsibility for me. Yeah, in, in this uh, discussion with your grandfather, when he sort of talked about um, this, this uh, continuation of the tradition of your family and of this area to make wine. He never, wine. he asked me. Never. No? Never, he asked me. Never. But. Uh, Did you feel it? Yourself? No, I. No, I, I, I was born in the cellar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I played when I was a child, when I was three, four years. I, I played in Nascondere, hide. Yes. 
had a, and sick. Yes, I had an into the text. Mm. Okay, I was born. I I feel all the culture, wine, and food. For me, it was normal uh, to do other because it uh, was a poor situation. Mm. Uh, not the money, not, the, and, and actually, not money, not uh, a very wonderful uh, life because uh, my grandfather, my father, uh, no time every Saturday, every Sunday. They work uh, very hard. Yes, no new car. Okay, and, and, and not uh, a fashion situation for um, um, for a child of 15 years old yes. on a man 20 years old because I work at I work it yes. in the farm in the cellar but I'm sta- I studied in I stood, yes in the school in the university and then my mind uh, uh, never had think in work uh, in the farm to make wine mm. I know make wines but uh, I don't I never I, I think to make wine in the future. Yes. Okay. And never my father or my grandfather asked to ask to me uh, or said me, okay, in the future you need work alone. Never. My grandfather died in 10 of August in uh, 1998 and uh, his uh, last uh, volontà, that's uh, last uh, uh, request a request yeah. uh, was uh, I want uh, Alessandro continue the uh, continue the activity continue the activity so but you worked whilst he was alive you you, you worked with him you, you did yes. you spend time and no, to try to learn a little I, no no I I uh, I work every time with him, mm-hmm. every year, uh, every harvest, uh, in, the, in, in the winter too. Sometimes I don't went uh, to school, uh, Monday, Tuesday, don't worry, I, to go uh, in the cellar for the, the ranks mm. or uh, other, other work. But uh, I, I'm, uh, for me, wise was uh, the normality. Yes. Okay. Uh, but changed my life in 1998 because uh, I understood very well that my grandfather chose me and gave me the great responsibility. What other interests did you have when you were a boy? Well, like what, what were your passions? Uh, my passion. My passion was... Uh, mm, my passion... When I, when I was a boy, uh, my great passion... passion uh, was a music. I I, I study um, study music too. Uh, I played drum. I I study jazz. But uh, in the evening, I played um, hard rock, heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, heavy metal. And uh, yes, my passion was uh, the music and the uh, box. Boxing? Yes, the boxing uh, was to my great uh, passion. Um, and study too. I, I love to study in the school. I love to study uh, law, economy, um, uh, philosophy. Yes. Um, Did you feel that you had a, a also a sense of discovery? You wanted to to learn, to, to travel, this kind of thing? Yes, I traveled. I, 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 I was uh, my passion was uh, in my mind. I think it worked in the war. Mm. I, I, I think okay, I don't stay here in Sardinia because Sardinia is an island. Uh, your Australian know very well <laughs> what is this. This uh, uh, is sometimes it's a problem when you are a child, you know? uh, when you are young. Mm. After you understand, understand that it isn't a problem, it's a power. <laughs> yes. Okay, but need time, need time. I travel. Uh, I, I think to work in Australia t- uh, too. Yes, yeah, so when I when I was 22, 23 years, I thought, okay, I I, I love uh, I love traveling. I can try to stay one year in Australia to understand the culture. But uh, I start to make wine in professional way. <laughs> so um, where were you when your grandfather died and 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 which required you to come home? What, what were you doing? 
1998 I don't was in uh, I, I'm not in Italy no 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 I'm not was in Italy I was in um, uh, out of Europe I come back for because my, my grandfather was uh, sick uh, I came back uh, I, I did the, the harvest because mm -hmm. um, only me worked in the farm okay uh, not your father my father worked since uh, my father worked uh, but uh, in the last five years uh, five years before 2000 uh, exactly now um, my grandfather, my father, uh, don't uh, work it, and then only me know very well all the processing, um, the tanks, and the um, uh, uh, know very well all. Mm -hmm. And I came back in my mind. Okay, I remain here. Do I do the uh, the harvest in, uh, after I come back in the in. Uh, in another country but uh, when I was here uh, I understand very well because my grandfather chose me mm. uh, because uh, other part of the family wanted to um, destroy all the vines just like to take, yes. take, take, take it up what for mm? is called take it up in English yeah. okay take it up yes because you can see now a very beautiful place Imagine in two thousand in uh, ninety eight mm. the the tourist the tourism in Sardinia was very powerful very great it was uh, they, they wanted uh, building um, residence hotels residence five star resort resort yes mm. sell this land to uh, Developers, uh, yes a yeah. uh, company to yes. building yes. a five star uh, five stars hotel. Because uh, I listen with my her this, mm. uh, and then I understand very well, and then into my heart, heart go out uh, the responsibility. Yes, and uh, passion and responsibility. I uh, decide to stay here to continue the tradition of, of my family. And I'm very happy. I'm very, very happy. I was born to make wine. <laughs> I was born to work in the land. So tell me about this particular part of, uh, of the world, uh, this part of Sardinia in uh, Romagna. Tell me a little bit about the, yes. the history, the tradition of this area. Oh, oh. Mm. Mm. You don't have a simple question, no? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Sardinia, Sardinia is is a continent. Mm -hmm. is um, is a, is very big uh, um, island in the Mediterranean, and uh, the reason uh, that in Sardinia there are a different culture, okay, different languages too. Mm -hmm. uh, this part is one of uh, most uh, ancient. Ancient, uh, ancient, ancient uh, uh, um, culture area in Sardinia. Um, the name is Romangia. Romangia because um, is uh, a land where the Roman, no, the Roman yes. people two thousand years ago uh, make uh, organization in the agricultural and the culture and mm -hmm. the culture of, of these uh, people. And uh, at the moment, uh, and then uh, uh, people make wine in this area uh, well, mm, yeah, since uh, two, uh, two, no, three thousand years, three thousand years before Christ. Christ. Uh, at the moment, is the second biggest, second biggest area in Sardinia, and uh, For one. Hmm? In, in, in the, in in the area or for grape production? Grape production. Okay. Grape pro pro production, exactly, in, in Sardinia. And uh, one uh, of the uh, most important area of Caranao. Caranao is our king, uh, is uh, the king grape in, uh, in Sardinia. Mm -hmm. We have uh, our name to call Caranao. 
Vaticano now in, in, in our area in Romagna the people call it uh, call, um, uh, retagliado niedo mm -hmm. uh, it's important because when a people has a different name to call a grape because the grape is part of the culture mm -hmm. okay uh, what can I say uh, the particularity of this area is uh, that we are in front of the sea uh, zero meter <laughs> to five thousand meter mm -hmm. uh, far from the sea uh, we are on the hill 250 meter and uh, we are four different soil we are four different soil in my farm i have vines in uh, with uh, three different soil and this is very important because uh, um, give uh, a very uh, complex uh, flavor and uh, aroma uh, aroma hmm? aroma, uh, aroma. Uh, and uh, other uh, important thing is the wind we are in, um, we are in no, uh, northwest of the highland and uh, the wind there are there is uh, always always and not uh, strong uh, always days but uh, every day there are uh, or a little bit of very strong wind and the wind is important when you work with uh, uh, vines because the most dangerous uh, mushroom uh, not the fungus fungus uh, are uh, mushroom, are um, peronospora and oidio. Uh, they born in humidity situation, mm -hmm. but if there is the wind, there is an humidity. So okay. is it is it is it humid or is it dry? The is dry. It's dry. Hot and dry here yeah, in the okay. summer, but uh, at the night in the night uh, there are uh, there is. Uh, 17 or 18 degree mm -hmm. in the summer mm -hmm. um, in the day is uh, 28 uh, 29 and then there are a very good um, um, I don't remember in Italian <laughs> in Italian excursion excursion the difference between the day and night temperature uh, yeah. exactly it's very good for wine you can feel in my wine because very a uh, very fluid but fresh too yes mm? okay so you mentioned about uh, Canonau and how important this grape is particularly to this area in Sardinia mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about Canonau because I think there is some confusion with people that uh, Canonau and uh, Grenache Granacha, oh. mm -hmm. are the same grape but as I've learnt they are uh, close they're related, but not the same. Yeah, um, Sardinia, mm, Sardinia has uh, uh, two different canal. Mm? Uh, one is uh, Tocca Rosso, very similar, uh, like uh, Grenache from France. Other is Canonau, is a logotipo, a very indigenous, mm -hmm. our indigenous. Uh, Sassari University it said in 2004 uh, that 80% uh, of Canonau in Sardinia uh, is in Canonau, mm -hmm. but is Tokai Rosso. Tokai Rosso is the Tokai Red uh, planted in Veneto in Italy. Rauschedo is the biggest uh, plant seller in the Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, sell plant of Tokai Rosso has Canonau, coal, Tokai Rosso Canonau mm -hmm. in Sardinia. And then too many winery buy, thinking by Canonau, but in reality was Tokai Rosso. And then uh, you has Canonau, you have Canonau if uh, um, the, the vines are old, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, or you planted a new uh, canonau, uh, but uh, not massal isolation, but uh, and, and not uh, um, from the nursery. From yes, exactly, from, yeah. exactly, exactly. 
Yeah. Yes. No doubt if you're listening to this podcast, you are a wine lover. And if you're a wine lover, no doubt you've also heard of Wine Companion. But if you haven't, Wine Companion is essentially James Halliday, uh, the grandfather of Australian wine. James started Wine Companion about 30 years ago, um, and it was basically a, a guide to Australian wine, a chronicle uh, of uh, where Australian wine was at the time. And it was an annual guide that uh, evolved into uh, not only an amazing wine magazine, which includes articles and tasting notes from some of Australia's uh, prominent wine communicators, but also uh, the website winecompanion.com uh, has amazing articles, but also a huge repository of information about wineries in Australia and tasting notes and points, that kind of thing. So um, as a way of support for this podcast, uh, you can actually go to the Wine Companion website and any subscription that you go for, uh, if you put in the code INTREPID30, they'll actually give you a 30% discount which is an amazing deal uh, and and that gives you access to so much information uh, as well as uh, amazing content uh, but uh, thank you very much wine companion for your support of this podcast and of course for everything you've done for australian wine so but there are particular parts of sardinia that are very important for canana and then there are parts in sardinia that are not ideal for the indigenous canana that's true and not understand sorry there are parts of Sardinia si. that are historic, historical ah. areas for Cananao. Okay, historic Cananao in Sardinia is very, very simple because um, the historic area in Sardinia was uh, on the coast. Yes. Because wine needed to sell and um, people lived on the coast in Sardinia. In the middle lived very a little part, two, three, three percent of the population. Yes. And then Sounds people, like, like Australia. Exactly. People made wine on the coast. Yes. And we have document uh, about a thousand years ago, uh, right, uh, a very traditional area was uh, Alghero, mm -hmm. mm? our area, Sorso Senori, Romangia, Sorso Senori, a two little town about Romangia, is an area. Uh, south of Sardinia, uh, mm, Sulcis, uh, where there is uh, El Canignano, mm -hmm. other grape, very important grape in Sardinia, and uh, Cagliari, uh, and Ogliastra. Ogliastra was an uh, oriental part of Sardinia on the coast. And then, uh, when Veronelli, Luigi Veronelli was the first uh, mm, poet, uh, journalist, uh, philosophy, write the first book in Italy about wines in 1961. Uh, he write about all the wine, wines in Sardinia. And when he uh, uh, write about Canonao, he said, uh, Alghero, uh, a great Canonao in Alghero, a great canon now in uh, Sosa Senori, great, great, great canon now in, uh, in Cagliari, and uh, said to say uh, about canon now Yerzu uh, and vino rosso di Ogliastra, vino rosso di Oliena, nepente di Oliena, because that particular uh, is uh, uh, in Ogliastra and uh, in Norese make a very good wine. A very good wine uh, with Canonau, but the historic uh, method including not only Canonau, mm -hmm. including other grapes mm -hmm. as Pascale or Murved. In the Sardinian languages, is Muris de Lusardo, but it's Murved. Okay. Uh, Mon like Monastery, like in Spain? Yes. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So, um, you wanted to continue the work of your grandfather. Yeah. And uh, it's very important that uh, you were a, a vigneron, mm -hmm. that you grow your grapes and you only make wine from the grapes that you, you grow. Yeah. So the first, the first work was in the vineyard. Tell me, what, what, is, what was the tradition to work in the vineyards here for you? For me, 90% of the work is on the vines, on the vine, on, in the vineyard. Yes. Okay. In the cellar, uh, it's important follow the wine, follow the wine, uh, make a very clean process, okay, but 
we can uh, my grandfather said me uh, let me teach me uh, then uh, in the cellar we can only destroy the grapes yeah okay <laughs> it's very is is a true uh, way well what they do in the in the vine yes in the vine yeah. because what? it's very it's very special like the okay the the vines are very old there yeah. are different parts of the vineyard yeah. you have different parts of kind of now um, and, and you know, th this way of working is very traditional. It's not modern at all. No, but I, I can uh, say to you, uh, has uh, is very fashion at the moment. Uh, respond. I don't do. I don't do nothing in the in the uh, in the van yet. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Need work. Need work too much uh, in the van yet. Well, I start. Uh, well. I know a traditional way mm, uh, with my grandfather. In 1998, uh, when I start, uh, when I started uh, alone, I continues the traditional way. What is this traditional way? Okay, traditional way uh, in in the vineyard, but in agricultural mm -hmm. uh, in general, uh, was make a work. Mm, not uh, uh, with a schedule, okay, plan, a score, a plan mm -hmm. uh, with a plan, but uh, depends uh, from uh, the past year mm -hmm. and uh, depends from the past year and uh, in what do you want to do in the future, mm -hmm. okay, uh, in the future or in the next three, four, five years. Okay, you need a plan, a future plan, uh, looking the past. Mm -hmm. It's very important because each plant is different. Each plant is alive, is like us. Mm -hmm. uh, each plant has his life. Okay, uh, you can't uh, trattare, you can't. Uh, um, you can't uh, organize a, a work uh, thinking that all the plants are similar. No, yeah. it's not good. And then each work need understand your plant. This is traditional way. Why? Because in the past there wasn't a very luxury tractor. There wasn't a very there wasn't machine. The part, the, the major part of the work was by hand. Yes. And then it's very hard work. And uh, if you wrong, <laughs> you needed to start from zero. Yeah. Okay. For this was very important. Understood your, but not your plant, because the plant don't uh, live alone, live in uh, the ecosystem. Okay, and then you need to understand the ecosystem. It's not simple. For this, I'm very, very, very lucky because mm. you can't understand this. You can't learn in the book. You can't learn uh, in the seminar. Okay, I'm studying viticultural technology in the, in the future, but uh, don't uh, learn this. I'm very lucky because I was born in the vines, in the vineyard. Yeah. I was born in the farm uh, where people make wine. And um, you feel, you feel, and uh, after I have a confirmation in the book. Mm. I'm ex yeah, yeah, I'm I explain. Yeah, Okay, well, this is the traditional way, and then in practice, I explain 80%, other 20%, okay, uh, use, don't use chemical products, of, of, uh, synthesis uh, chemical products on the vines, only sulfur. I start to use copper in 1999. Mm -hmm. Never this farm used copper before because uh, just uh, sulfite on the vanilla was perfect okay to kill it, the mushroom as peronospora for example or oidio uh, and um, very important is the prune 
mm -hmm. mm, is important. It was very important the prune. The prune was very important because uh, you prune each plant uh, in relation about the weather. More stressed because without water, okay, uh, two time, two two choice. A prune in December or prune in February uh, de depends. Um, so your your grandfather didn't use any chemicals or anything like this. Didn't use irrigation, this kind of thing. Oh, how how did you come to use uh, this biodynamic practices? Well, my father never using chemical products because uh, I remember I, I when I was I think 18 18, 18 years old um, I come in, in our farm uh, a man uh, with a bag a luggage uh, opened the luggage and um, uh, too many uh, deprian too many deprian no? catalog about the chemical products explain half an hour yeah you can use this because you can make more grapes uh, more uh, no sick in the grapes uh, more healthy uh, healthy 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 uh, i i have i look i look at and i i i have yeah. uh, very intelligent i'm, very, I'm a, I was very uh, interesting because of, oh wonderful I work uh, less <laughs> I can work less uh, very very wonderful after people close the, his luggage and go out because my grandfather said thank you but uh, I'm not interesting I asked to my, my grandfather why uh, if you learn how wonderful products he said me Alessandro I don't think I don't you know credo I don't believe uh, ble believe I don't believe in uh, in this product because uh, needed time to understood to understand mm -hmm. I think needed 20 years to understand uh, the quality of this product but uh, we make wine I make wine uh, 50 years no why I need change <laughs> and, but uh, I I ask yeah yes but uh, I think we need change because the modernity we need change Alessandro stop it we don't have money to buy this product <laughs> simple <laughs> very, very simple, simple. And uh, and then uh, I start uh, uh, I start to study biodynamic in two thousand one, mm. and uh, I start to using biodynamic uh, preparation biodynamic method in two thousand three October two thousand three, but biodynamic is a method; it's not final goal. Okay, we don't make biodynamic wines. We don't want to sell biodynamic wines. We, because biodynamic is a method, mm -hmm. it's very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, we make wine. Why we use biodynamic? Because I think in this moment is the unique, not the best, is the unique method um, um, to understood very well. Uh, the nature and uh, to do uh, fertility uh, um, in the land, in the earth mm. okay and uh, and then I'm very happy uh, to make bad dynamic mm. so everything that you do in the vineyards is by hand like the, the grapes are, are picked by hand you, do you how do you decide when to pick the grapes? Yes, every time. Uh, my laboratory, I have uh, um, a very cheap, uh, very cheap uh, uh, chemical laboratory. It's my mouth. <laughs> uh, it's my mouth. It's my la it's my uh, experience. Uh, yes, History. experience is experience. It's very important. And uh, why? Because if you make analysis. You can translate, is correct? Mm -hmm. Not transferir, transfer, transfer. You can 
you can transfer, that you want to transfer your responsibility to science, other person, other paper, to, uh, for mm. other. Yeah. Not your not, yes, not your responsibility. Yeah. And then the uh, analysis, the chemical analysis. Uh, some, if if I follow the chemical analysis, never. I made my wines because uh, uh, if you look the sugar, if you look the uh, acidity, you can follow this. You can make a very great wine, but I don't want make great, great wines. I want to make the best terroir wines. It's mm. different. It's mm. very different way for me. I said we make imperfect, perfect wine. You make imperfect wine perfectly. Exactly. Yeah, okay. See. So tell me about um, how you actually make the wine when you bring the grapes into the, the cellar. No, no understand. Excuse me? Uh, after you, ah, you, okay. you pick Brief. the grapes, you bring into the cellar. What is the process? You, uh, you're, you're making a little white wine and some red wines? No. Oh, okay. Mm, it's a very simple way because uh, every year we, we do the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't have a, a new label or new wines. We may each each wines uh, come uh, no each in, in from each wines I made one label. Mm -hmm. Okay, our crew, the Tori Bianco. Uh, I have a vines of the Tori Bianco. I have uh, a vine year of Tuderi, of Tenores, of the Tori, of Moscheredo, of Kimbanta, of Tomaz. It's very simple for me. I don't work in blending. Okay, no. no. Uh, and then I test the grape. Sometimes I start with uh, the Tori Bianco, with Vermentino. Sometimes uh, I start with uh, Moscheredo or Pascale or the reason plan okay uh, i taste stop and i try to make the best in, in the harvest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for example this harvest was uh, one month early and then uh, uh, we make very fastly very fastly a uh, harvest we make uh, three uh, three, uh, three petrol, petrol of um, uh, cutting, yes, mm -hmm. picking grapes. Uh, be mm. What I do before? Nothing. Only test the grape. But but when in in the cantina, in the cellar, mm -hmm. um, all the wine, all the grapes are in contact only with cement. Well. Uh, we make wine, uh, the fermentation, uh, um, well, first of all, I use a select table, still select a table mm -hmm. over there, mm -hmm. and uh, all the grape pass on the select table. We keep the grape by hand, mm -hmm. sure. And the fermentation starts uh, with a skin contact in seven tanks, okay. After, when the maceration ended, when I decide to end the skin contact, the maceration, testing why? Mm. Because uh, I was uh, very, I was uh, the I was a tannin elegant. I was a tannin elegant. I don't want a tannin dry. Mm. Okay. And then when I feel a balance mass, most of most mass, uh, with the elegant tannin, I mm, I decide to separate the the skin from the juice mm -hmm. okay I separate the wine stay in the steel tanks for one night two night to the first cleaning okay to first cleaning yeah. after I pick the the wines I go to the tanks the tanks uh, in cement mm -hmm. the wine stay in cement during uh, two years three years depends and uh, I reuse steel uh, a night before to blend it. Uh, the tanks, not the grapes, the, not, not the not varieties, the, the, the tanks. The, yes, the, the wines yes. before bottling, because uh, before bottling I need, uh, I need uh, because uh, I have uh, a tanks about uh, 700 liters, mm -hmm. for example, or 15,000 li liters. Uh, each tank is different. And then before bottling I blend it the same 
grapes, the same wine from the same vines. Mm -hmm. That's all. Very simple. No additional Very sulfides. No, and I don't addition. No, I don't use sulfur. Never, never, never in fermentation. Don't use yeast. Uh, excuse me. I use yeast indigenous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't add nothing. And I add nothing added. No, you no. don't take anything away. Never, never, never. I just use uh, sometimes depends from the wines and the grapes. Uh, one gram, one milligram uh, of, um, excuse me, one gram for hectoliters uh, about sulfite. But uh, if I look in my history, I, I use it in five uh, percent of all the wines. Mm. Okay, very depend because sometimes it's very difficult to harvest. The wine is not very. Uh, um, strong and then I help him come with a, a very low quantity of sulfide but and do you try to keep the red wines uh, a few years before you release them to mm -hmm. the market you you keep the red wines mm -hmm. in bottle for yes some years before my you release yes my red wine stay in the cellar in the seven that uh, three years four years depends uh, and uh, stay in a bottle six months. Okay. Minimum. Yes. Sometime one year. Depends. Depends. Um, so the, the the particularities of of your wine, of course, that they are representative of of this place, of the grape varieties, of the vintage, but uh, they considered to be you know a little extreme, partly because the the alcohol. In, mm -hmm. in in the wines are a little bit higher than than expected but I know that um, you know because I have the pleasure of uh, showing these wines in Australia for for my job you know and and I show these wines and I don't tell people uh, the alcohol of the wines and then they, they taste the wines and they say oh this is very good and then I show them the alcohol and they, they're very surprised it's, it's not possible because it's so imbalanced, it's it's so particular to to this place that uh, you know there's very very unique wines and and I think that uh, what I've seen whilst I've been here these days with you, you know even having uh, my t-shirt covered in uh, 2015 Dettori from the from the cement vat is uh, you know these wines are very very particular to to you and to to the culture and your history. Thank you. <laughs> But uh, I want to, to thank you for giving me some time to, to be on the podcast. And of course, like I say, thank you for welcoming me to your, your, beautiful, your beautiful part of the world. And I want to come back again. I, I yes. would encourage all my listeners, if you can make the time, to come to Sardinia because it is a very beautiful part of, of Italy, even though it's not part of Italy technically, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Alessandro. Um, my listeners would like to know if uh, they can um, contact you or follow you on uh, on Twitter or Facebook. Yes, people can. So, so the account is uh, Tenute Dettori. Dettori, yes, in, in Twitter and in Facebook. Make sure you're following because um, Alessandro mostly it's in it's in Italian. Yeah. But um, I, I will ask him to sometimes make some some posts in English <laughs> but yeah. um, but I, I would encourage people to to uh, to follow him um, and to to try some of the wines if you can but uh, thank you again Alessandro no thank you for your time and thank you for uh, Australia <laughs> my pleasure <laughs> and of course as always thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Vincast I have been James Gersbrook otherwise known as the intrepid wino and uh, yeah, of course, you can follow me on social media on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Intrepid Wino, but the podcast on Twitter is at The Vincast. Facebook.com forward slash Intrepid Wino is where you'll find my Facebook page where I put lots of links and pictures and stuff like that. Uh, and of course, don't forget the YouTube channel Intrepid Wino where I've got my Let's Taste videos as well as hopefully some video content that I took at, at Detori. Uh, you can, of course, subscribe to the podcast on a number of different platforms 
platforms. Uh, when you subscribe, it actually means that you're going to get the, the newest episode as soon as it becomes available and you can download and listen to it at your leisure. Uh, and if you do subscribe, please take some time to get, leave me a rating and a review for the podcast because it really does help um, get the word out to other potential listeners. But also, uh, it's a great uh, sort of feedback for potential guests. Uh, of course, all the information is available at intrepidwino.com. Uh, you'll find every episode of the podcast uh, and lots of different writings that I've done in the past and hopefully will do in the future. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, thank you to Alessandro, of course, for making some time and for welcoming me to the winery. Uh, but until next time, bye. Bye.